Um, so let's go ahead and, and flip over to our drawing view, and the drawing view is where we can uh, spend some more time flushing out the drawings. So um, if I wanted, I'll just use this last panel as an example of how I can flush out the drawings. Um, and I will go ahead once again and um, move over to my tool properties window if I, if I need to see my tool properties for the tool that I've got selected. Um, or I can just go ahead and continue using my brush presets. Might want to stick my color tab down here. So I'll just move that down over there. And so um, if I want to go ahead and continue with this character, there's a couple of things I could, I could do. I could First I could start to flush out um, how it looks just with my, with my same rough, rough brush. This is a really, uh, um, really, really rough panel that I did from the, from the other side. So I probably got him yelling some things. Maybe his mouth is open. And he needs some ears. And so let's say now maybe that's a good enough uh, starting point now for me to move over to my clean. It kind of depends on um, how much you want to flush out your roughs. But let's say that that's good enough then I might want to move back over to my brush preset toolbar again and um, now from here I can switch to my clean brush and my clean brush uh, will allow me just to paint there in a black uh, line. Now something that you might want to use that's kind of new to Storyboard Pro um, 3D is the pencil tool uh, that we have now with the variable line thickness. So um, it used to be that we used to always use the brush tool when we want to have a thick and thin line. But now, um, and I'll just do my, uh, my clean on a separate layer just to make this easier to show you what's going on. But now with my pencil tool, let's say that I draw a line with my pencil tool. It's still a nice thick and thin line, but what's nice about the line is I can move it around from the center contour here. I can select the, the line and move it from there. But I can also, if I need to, use my pencil editor tool here to adjust the thickness of that line. So it makes it really easy. Maybe I want to remove some key points there, and then I might want to just make it sort of tapered at the ends. And as you're working, you can also set up some uh, custom pen styles so that as you draw, it automatically tapers the ends and things like that. Um, but let's just say that's good enough for now. So what I'll do now is um, I'm not going to flush out my whole drawing. I will at some point drag in one that's already been done. But I just want to point out that other things that can be useful to you is using the shading brush with your draw behind option. And what the draw behind will do is if I draw, it's going to knock that color behind any existing color on the same layer that I'm drawing on. So uh, make use of all those wonderful drawing tools um, to uh, draw your storyboards. And now at this point, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch over to this first panel and show you a little bit about how we can work with 3D models here. So one of the things that I um, have done is I have modeled already a pirate ship um, in another software and I've exported my pirate ship to the um, FBX format. That's the one I've uh, chosen to use here. Um, you can use a variety of different formats. You can use FBX, you can use OSB files, which is another open source format that we do have a plugin to export from um, from Maya, or you can use 3ds and OBJ. But really, the best one to use in this case is probably the FBX format. Um, oh, it looks like I actually did use the OSB, but in any case, the what's nice about the FBX and the OSB format is that both of these formats package the textures in with your 3D file. And so what that means is, let's say if I take this um, pirate ship, you can see as I drag it in that it's already got a texture on it. And this texture comes in automatically with the FBX and the OSP formats. If you're using some of those other um, legacy formats like the OBJ, it doesn't copy your textures in, so you need to manually copy your textures in for those formats. So um, let's just say here, maybe I want to um, adjust this pirate ship so that it kind of matches what's going on in my rough layer. And once I've got it in the right spot, maybe I even want to um, do a little bit of a transformation over the course of that frame. Like I can move the ship towards the screen, for example. Um, and then if I want to see how that's working over the course of time, then that is um, a good opportunity for me to uh, switch over to my... Um, uh, timeline view or to add my timeline down here at the bottom. Um, let me just do a restore default workspace here so I can get back to what I want to do. So I can switch to my timeline view. Sometimes I reorganize my workspace too many times and restore default workspace is a great way to um, get back to different views.